Am I making you cry? Because nope. you're making me cry. No, nope, no. Nope. It's not you, as much as I enjoy being with you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Game Show Wednesdays, where we spoof game shows to get to know our staff a little bit better. My name is Patrick Shones. I'm on staff here at Pulaski Heights. And tonight's game show is another episode of Hot Ones, where we will interview a guest while we eat increasingly hotter hot sauces on chicken wings. Today, our guest is Dr. John Robbins. He's our senior pastor here at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. John, welcome. Thanks. Glad to be here. Appreciate it, Patrick. So how do you feel about spicy things? Do you uh, like eating spicy I things? I can put all that on ice cream and eat it, man. That is no big deal for me. I can handle every single one of these without a problem. Sounds to me like you are not worried about what's going on. I'm up. absolutely terrified, but uh, we're yeah. going to do it anyway. That's kind of where I'm yeah. at. We're going to see where we go. No, but, we're in uh, this together, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's tough through it. Um, so first question before we get into the first sauce, it's a very, uh, it's kind of a softball question okay. for you. Um, when was the first time that you knew you wanted to be a preacher? I think uh, the summer before my senior year in college, I couldn't get through an algebra class that was a freshman level class. I was taking it that summer for the fifth time. And so I spent pretty much the whole summer by myself trying to focus and go to tutoring sessions, do everything I needed to do. So I had the summer to myself, which was really a contemplative time for me as well. Spent the summer really thinking about who I am and where is God in my life and that kind of thing. And it really, by the end of the summer, I would kind of uh, sealed the deal in my relationship with God and knew that that's what I needed to do. So it was really a summer of uh, focus intentionally on my relationship with God and it went from there. So. So one could say that being a repeat offender led you towards that is correct. being clergy. I only right, took college good. algebra five times, Other, but that five times was God's way of calling me into the ministry. Perfect. Not accounting. Got it. Exactly. Don't All give right. me any numbers. Our first sauce up today is the uh, Howler Monkey Original Hot Sauce. All right. Uh, the Howler Monkey um, is gluten-free, just in case uh, that was a concern. There's no carbs, and it's low sodium. Well, so that's, that's all that enough. matters to me. There's no carbs, low sodium. So. You bet. Uh, and it ranks about a 600 on the Scoville s scale. And so, like, 600 on the Scoville scale is like lava, right? Yeah, well, according to, according to this chart that I found on the Internet, because yeah. everything on the Internet is true, right. uh, that should be somewhere near an Anaheim. Uh, chili. Anaheim so, chili. Got it. Uh, so let's uh, let's give this one a try. Thanks, sir. Just go ahead and actually put it on the wing itself. We're actually going to ingest we're, this. We're going to do this for real. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it only gets worse from here. So here. I don't expect this one to be too bad. All right. Here we go. We're right. ready. So here's the first one. One, two, three. Do it. Be a man. You know, it's actually pretty good. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I'm going to have to remember I, that one. That was good. I can handle that one. Yep, yep. Piece of cake. All actually, right. I wouldn't put it on cake, but it's still good. Yeah, it might be weird on cake. Yeah. Um, so, all right, next question. There's a story about a ballpoint pen. What's the story behind the ballpoint pen and why? Well, I write almost exclusively with ballpoint pens. I write my sermons with ballpoint pens. I'm old school, et cetera. Years ago, when I was serving a little church, I had to share an office with my part-time secretary. And we had to share a little bitty room, so my desk faced her back. Her, she faced a computer against a wall. So when I talked to her, I always talked to her back. One day she came in with a beautiful new blouse on, a silk blouse she was very proud of, and I said, that's a lovely, lovely blouse. She went about her business on the computer. I was writing with my fountain pen, and it was not producing ink. And I kept shaking that pen, trying to get the ink to come out. And I would shake and shake and shake. And finally, started writing, went about my business, and I looked up, and I had covered her back on that beautiful silk blouse with fountain pen ink. And so I had to find a way. Her name was Sandy, and I had said, Sandy, I need to tell you something. And she said, well, what is it, John? She turned around, and I said, I covered the back of your beautiful blouse with fountain pen ink. And I promise you I'm going to buy you a new blouse. You get the rest of the day off. You can have the rest of the month off as far as I'm concerned. I can't believe I did it. She thought I was joking. She went down to the bathroom, checked it out, came out and said, yes, indeed you did. And do you mind if I go home and change? I said, Sandy, <laughs> please, let's go to the store right now. I'm going to buy you a new blouse, that kind of thing. She was a great uh, sport about it. But yeah, I was pretty mortified that I would do something that stupid, but I've done many, many stupid things since then. 
so I can understand why ballpoint pens right. are Right, so stay away, if, the, if particularly if it's clogged up, you don't yeah. want to get near me. Yeah, do you, do you avoid number two pencils just because of the graphite going anywhere? Or? No, okay. pencils are just, that's for an amateur, Patrick, okay. quite frankly. Right. I don't even refer to them as fountain pens. We refer to them in the world of ink as fine writing instruments. Fine writing instruments, yes. got it. Okay. So you I, obviously, like a lot of other people, I'm going to have to mentor you along the way. I would appreciate with a fountain that. pen. I would appreciate stuff. that. Yes, yeah. I will yeah. teach you. Uh, you know, I'm I'm one of those millennials. I know, and, so and I you're all into the all into the you know? computer stuff yeah. and all into the, the electronics. Yeah. And the bottom line is, it all boils down to a simple fountain pen. There you Never go. forget that. Never forget that. Yeah, will do. All right, all right. Our next right. sauce we've got here. We're going to move up one notch. This is the Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Um, that is made from... Does it affect your heartbeat? I mean, is that what you're telling we're me? We're going to find out okay. because okay. it is made with red habaneros. Okay. So this one yep. ranks at about a 4,000 on the Scoville scale. And the other one was 60,000, well, correct? The other one was 600. 600. Yes. So we are, yeah. we are going up a little bit with this I, one. Yes. Okay. And so, are you sure the other one wasn't 60,000? Yeah. Are you could, reading correctly? Well, you know, Michael did type this piece of paper. Yeah, well, that's so, true. It could you know, be We could, have, could be missing a few zeros right, here. Let's move on so, right on the next one. 4,000, this should be somewhere near a, a hotter ha a jalapeno. Here we go. So here we go. That's good. That's good. I can handle that one. Yeah. All I right, like the flavor there. of that one, too. That's got a good flavor to it. You know, I'm a Pat, I'm a Texas boy, Patrick, so those Texas boys are tough as nails, man. Bring it on. All right, well, speaking of Texas, yeah. um, I hear there's a story about meeting George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, years ago, I served in a county seat town as pastor of the church. There was a house across the street that had been a Victorian, old Victorian home had been redone and it became kind of a library as well. And Laura Bush, who was the first lady of Texas at the time, mm -hmm. was very much into libraries and that kind of thing. So they invited the governor to come, he was not president yet, to speak and to dedicate this library slash Victorian remodeled home, which was directly across the street from the church. So the city officials asked me if I would come and pray. And I said, I'd be happy to do so. At the time he was running for president, but he was not president. Yep. And we sat up on the uh, porch and they had a nice setup and they had secret service there because he was running for president and that kind of thing. He was actually the nominee at the time, but the election hadn't been held yet. And so I got up at the appropriate time and I offered my prayer and then I sat down next to him and he patted me on the thigh and he said, great prayer preacher, great prayer. So I'm one of the few people who can say that not only does a former president think I'm a masterful prayer, but he touched my thigh. He touched your thigh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of the great moments. And um, I mean, how do you top that? Well, and at least that, I mean, that was pre-Safe Sanctuary days. Yes, and, exactly. And it was outside it was, the church it, it building. It was outside. So it was, not, it was well, not on church property. Yeah. It was not on church property. So. But it's a memory uh, for sure. It is a memory. And I'm sure he has no recollection of it whatsoever. It, it took all of that total was maybe three seconds. But it was three seconds out of his life that um, I certainly remember. There you go. Well, you know, he shared candy with Michelle Obama. He patted you on the See, leg. See, so. I mean, you tell me which one of those is more important. There you go. There you go. All right. Up next, All our right. next hot sauce is the Torchbearer Son of Zombie Wing Sauce. Son of Zombie. Uh, it says triple X hot here, so uh, accidentally no, healthy, we intentionally don't, delicious. Patrick, let me just tell you right now, yeah. we don't, triple X in the church, yeah, no, that's, well, that's just that's you not know, good. That's, that's what we've got here, okay. so we're going to give it a shot here. The Son of Zombie Wing Sauce. This was 24,000. The other one was what? 4,000. Six times hotter. Yeah, so we're stepping up quite a bit. Yeah, well, and, when you uh, when you can't get it out of the bottle, that's thick. Man. Yeah, well, it's kind of clogged at the top, so I'm going to give it a little it, shake. Is it clogged see if we with can't get the, lava? Uh, what's what's it clogged with? Well, we... I'm hoping it doesn't clog us as much as the, the yeah, bottle's well, clogged. Yeah, I'm not so. sure we would be clogged. That's yeah, probably well, not the direction we would be headed. What I'm trying not to have happen is what happened to uh, to Michael a where couple episodes half the ago, bottle. yeah, where you got half the bottle on one wing. I mean, you can almost feel the heat on the bottle. Yikes! All right. Wait a minute, all my wings are stuck together. Right, row. All right. 
So this is 24,000 Scoville. Uh, so that puts us somewhere in the neighborhood of a uh, hot serrano or a cayenne pepper. All right, here we go. Ready? I put it right on top of my tongue. That probably wasn't a real smart way. <laughs> well, doing it. we'll figure that out here in a minute. All right, it's getting warmer. It's still doable though. Yeah, I'm hanging tough at this point. Yeah. I mean, neither one of us have gone for the milk or the water yet, so. Not yet. I kind of wonder about these other sissies that have gone before us, man. Yeah. Um... Hey, you, let's fight. Them's fighting words. <laughs> You know, I, I, so far I can only come in. I mean, Reverend McMurray did hang in there till the end. She did survive, um, and you got to give her props for that. I mean, I, she did make it. She actually, in some ways, uh, did better than somebody who can easily go through all this because she had to hang tough when you clearly see she was an emotional wreck. Yep. Physically, she was at a place she'd never been before. Well, but and luckily, she still stuck with it. Luckily, she gave us the advice of wearing waterproof mascara today. That's so true. neither one of us have any running mascara. We're not gonna have to worry about that. That's a good point. So we're in good shape. Yep. All right, next question we've got on the list here. What's one of the strangest moments that you've encountered in ministry? I know as a preacher's kid, I've seen several uh, through my father's career. Right. So I'm curious, what, uh, what are, what's one of the strangest moments you've had in ministry? Well, I mean, I've had several of them, quite frankly. I had one um, one time, and it's a long story. I can't get into it. It's way too detailed. But we had, <clears throat> I had a funeral service, and the cousin of the deceased came into my office and said, Essentially, he loved to cuss, so we need you to incorporate the F word in your funeral message on several occasions. <laughs> and I said, you are kidding me. And she said, no, no, I'm totally serious. And uh, she told me that on the phone. I said, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do that. She hung up on me, which made me mad. <laughs> um, called me back in a little while and said, you know what, we really, really want you to do this. Family would like for you to do that. I said, I'm not sure it's my job as a pastor to find a way to incorporate the F word in my message. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> she hung up again. She did call a third time, and it's a long story. I never incorporated the F word in my message. Let me just be clear about that. But when I went to the funeral home where the service was to be held, the funeral director pulled me aside and said, we have a crazy woman who's going to be in this service. I said, oh, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> he said, we've never done this before, but we're going to ask funeral directors to actually sit in the congregation in case she gets out of control. Um, so she didn't get out of control. My wife, Susan, was at the funeral as well. Uh, she did some really, really strange things when the casket was open, which we don't need to get into. But it was bizarre, surreal to say the least. But that's one of them. I've got lots and lots of them, but we'll, we'll stick with that. Well, and it seems like um, that question is usually answered by clergy at a funeral. Yes. Like just one time at a funeral yes. or Fu pre preparing yeah, for a funeral. a funeral. Yeah, one time at a funeral. It starts usually with that because we've all got unusual funeral stories. Well, I think that clergy and funeral directors need to get together and write a book series. Right. Because that would right. be comic. So, or make a movie even. Yeah. I mean, I would try to, it'd be a challenge. I'd try to figure out who would play me in that. I was thinking it's kind of down to, I'm not, Brad Pitt might be one, uh, an option for me to play I me. I mean, I, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think Brad Pitt or uh, George Clooney, I can't decide which one would, one of those two would probably play me. I mean, for, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's pretty obvious yeah. why. But yeah. Yeah. anyway, maybe one of these days that'll happen. There we'll we go. See. Sounds good. All yeah. right, our next sauce on the list here is uh, this is a, a, a return sauce here, the Black Garlic Carolina Reaper. Um, Reaper. Yeah, this one is from Bravado Spice Company and weighs in at 71,000 on the Scoville scale. Oh my goodness, 71,000. 71,000. So I think I'm going to do like you. I'm going to pour it on the side and then... Uh, yeah, I, with that last one not wanting to come out, I was like, yeah. I'm going to put it on the plate and then dip the wing in it. Yeah, just, that's uh, better. Just to avoid any catastrophe. Oh, of, you of young sausage. people come up with such clever ideas, Patrick. Yeah, well, uh, so this one is uh, 71,000, so that puts us in the neighborhood of like a Thai pepper. Okay, ready? All right, let's do it. You doing it? Yep. One thing about it, you want to eat the whole wing. Yep. Because if you have just a small bite of it, mm, well, the, the correct sauce pepper. to wing ratio is important. It is. Definitely getting hotter. Mm-hmm. Yep, feeling that one uh, all yeah, the way through the back. Yeah, that one's starting to come on. Yep. 
Yeah, that one's got a little more kick to it than the others. Yep. But still doable, still yeah. bearable. We're hanging tough, yeah. man, I'm telling you. Yeah. You sure you're not from Texas? I'm not from Texas. Grew up in Arkansas. That's but I did live man. in Texas for a while. Okay, well, so that's, you, you go. got some of that rubbed off on there you. There you go. I don't want to be in Texas ever again. I love Arkansas, but I'm just telling you, Texas boys, we're tough. Well, being a Texas boy, how did you end up in Little Rock? Well, I married a girl from Little Rock. Okay. And so Little Rock became kind of our home base over the years. I was a preacher's kid, too, so... As you know what that's like, you move a lot. I never really had a hometown. Nowhere do I have to go back to be buried. Little Rock kind of became our home base for me. We would come at Christmas, Thanksgiving, summertime, and all that for all these years. And um, love Little Rock. And it been to Pulaski Heights on numerous occasions. And um, obviously watched it on television over the years and that kind of thing. So just really felt like uh, if there was ever an opportunity, and who would have thought, it's got to be of God because... I never ever thought I'd have the chance, and it seemed to work out really well. Yep. So, grateful to be here. But yep. uh, it all started with a uh, beautiful young lady from Little Rock, Arkansas. It's funny how that works. Back in 1988. There you go. Were you alive in 1988? I was. I was. How old were you in 1988? I was two. <laughs> <laughs> drink. You drink that right now. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Yes, then. please. I graduated from college in 1988. That <laughs> gummit. So this is another return of Da Bomb. <laughs> da Bomb. Uh, not a missile. It's, yeah. You know, it's not a missile. That looks like Michael a got sign. that wrong on the that first looks, Are you sure that's not nuclear waste we're about to ingest? Well, it, because it is of, a bomb that has nuclear waste yeah, in well, it. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah, this one uh, we're stepping up again. This is 135,000. What, what was the last one? The last one is 71,000. This is twice as hot. This one's 135,600. Oh, 135,600. It's important. Yeah, because well, it's the bomb. It is so, the bomb. All right. 135, I got to start finding us... places on my plate now. I've gotten yeah. so much. You got to use your real estate wisely. Oh, my god. So gosh. this puts us in the range of. Hey, it's, um, it's actually melting through the plate. Is that yeah, okay? Yeah. That, is that, that all right? I think that's normal. Okay. That's, that's right. the nuclear part of it. Okay. Here. This is a, a, a hot um, habanero. Maybe even a fatale pepper. That's kind of where we're at in. Uh, I don't. I'm not. A, I know what a habanero is. Obviously, I have no idea what a fatale is. I don't either, but uh, I suspect it's hot. It's so. clearly hot. All right, here we Wings go, man. Wings up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> That's a step up, my friend. That's a big step up. I think uh, I might have to, uh, to to bring in the milk on that mm. one. Uh, you know, you can't even fake that one. No, that, that one's serious. Um, actually, we'll start with the water and see if this is a mistake before I go to the milk. I'm gonna, I was trying to... You want to make it all even act the like end. that one's not bad. Yeah, no, that one's... And that taste, that is disgusting. It's not as good flavor-wise as the others are, no. No, you wouldn't put it on... Anything. Anything, yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's 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 got one purpose and one purpose only. I'm trying not to drink the milk. Torture whoever eats But that milk, I, I don't even like milk. I mean, I don't have a problem with milk. Outside of cereal, I don't drink it. Man, it looks beautiful right now, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, because I don't know about you, but the longer this one sits, the worse Holy it's getting. Moses. Uh, okay. Am I making you cry? Because no. you're making me cry. No, no. <laughs> It's not you. As much as I enjoy being with you, it's, it's, um, it's that bottom. All right, I'm there. holding off as long as I can. You're going to hold out. All right. We'll see if we can get through these and uh, get to that last one. And You know, that whole get off being tough here. in Texas thing, that was yeah. a total lie. Yeah. Everybody yeah. that was all made up. Yeah, no, that one was serious. I, I think that's hotter Holy than 135. Smoke. Yeah, that's... Uh, all right. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's biography <laughs> is one of your favorite books, is. is what I was told. <laughs> right. Um, what makes him so influ influential in your life? I think for me, Bonhoeffer was a guy who was a Lutheran pastor, had a PhD when he was like 20 or 21. Brilliant preacher. I've got his sermons when he was preaching at age 22 and 23 that are, the insight is overwhelming for somebody that age. Brilliant man. And Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor in Germany during the Second World War. Very much opposed, excuse me just a second, I got up. <laughs> runny nose here, but very much opposed to Hitler and the Nazi movement and really tried to assassinate Hitler. 
believed that getting rid of Hitler would save millions and millions of lives and that kind of thing. But Bonhoeffer was very much a resistor to the evil, preached about it publicly, was ostracized by lots of people. And long story short, he ended up in a Nazi concentration camp, several of them, but ended up one and he was hanged two weeks before they were liberated. Uh, so he was a martyr for the faith. But a brilliant man and a devout Christian who really stood up when everybody else uh, bowed down to Hitler. Yeah. He stood up to him. So it, it's just, it's a masterpiece of a book. And I always just admire anybody who takes a stand like that or is willing to risk in some way for the greater good. Um, did I, did I, I don't even know what I just said. Did I even, <laughs> yeah, what no, were that you was, talking about? That was an answer to the question. Okay. Was, well, know, I don't even know what the question was. We, we were talking well, about, my favorite, what was my favorite ice cream? Is that what you asked me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ice cream sounds good yeah. right now. I don't know about you, but. I, I would, like milk ice cream. Yeah, I would you know, love whatever a big old just, scoop of ice yeah. cream right now. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed, they turned the heat up in the, the Yeah, they have. Here. Uh, somebody turned the heat down. Um, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. They it's turned the heat up. control here. I know. I think there may be a fire somewhere. Yeah, well. We did have that fire alarm go off yesterday. We so. did. All right, well, let's get to our last one here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Last one. Fun as this one. sounds, we're going to get to. Uh, no, wait a minute. Now, tell me again how much it was, 135600 135, was the previous one. Right. And it was that was hot. Like, that, that was seriously yeah, hot. Yeah, that was, that was no joke. This is from Hellfire Fiery Fool hot sauce. I think we're the fiery fools. Yes, uh, fool definitely. Um, according to the bottle, this is the hottest sauce in the world without extract. Patrick, uh, you are a monster. Uh, this this clocks in at 550,000. That is more than four times as high. No, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and one of our staff said that chocolate also is a good. Really? See, I'm trying so, to hang tough and not have anything and say just, I did this without anything. But I'm just listen. curious before we go into it if he's right. I'm going to try it. You're going to do it. See, I'm you've try. already you've already bowed. You've You're already all, bowed down, man. So I live in a house where black pepper is about the hottest thing we eat on a regular basis. So. Well, I, let me, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I have never once in my life in my house had any de bomb on anything. And I'm just going to go on Unless venture. I was trying to kill cockroaches, then we might pour it on the floor. I'm going to venture to guess that you're probably not going to have no, any No, well, I'm going to go ahead house, and tell yeah. you, you're right. All right, so fiery fool. Fiery fool, that's you and me. Yeah. That's a plural. Oh, this is another one of those really thick ones, too. Hang on, we're going to have to. Oh gosh. Why all of a sudden am I so nervous? <laughs> <clears throat> You're not the only one, my friend. Oh. oh, yeah, I'm glad I put it on the plate because that one came out chunky. Isn't lava chunky? I mean, when lava spews out of a volcano, isn't it chunky? I'm just curious. Did they just take a bottle and dip this down in a volcano? I'm just curious why they left that unattended on the table. Shouldn't that yeah. have an armed guard with it? We didn't and have any children near this, did we? Well, I hope not. Well, we did have Michael McMurray the so, other day, so that's close. All right, well, I'm going to get a fresh paper towel before we gotta get into this, because yeah. I have a feeling it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. Good Lord have mercy. Holy Moses. <sighs> Whose idea was this? Not, you know what? <laughs> what we do for the cause. Yeah. All right. All I have to say is that there better be... One million views of this to justify <laughs> ever. Wait a minute, I just wiped it on my back of my hand. Hang on. That was not smart. Yeah, we want to For some reason, contained. have you noticed how some reason this just opens up every <laughs> crevice, crack, whatever we, not crack, you know what I mean. So. Well, and I sweat a lot. I'm a hot-natured guy, yeah. but I'm, I'm sweating more did than Did you I put some right on now. there? I did. I did. It's on, it's on my way. Uh, right it is on there. I see it. I'm debating on oh, whether oh I go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm debating on whether the hot sauce is the first bite or the second bite of the wing. Lord Jesus, we just ask <laughs> that you hold us up right now. <sighs> it, All right. That was a sincere prayer. You ready? Oh, good. Did you eat it? All right. That is wretched. Mm. <clears throat> Good golly, I lost my tongue. <laughs> my tongue just melted. I don't even have it in him. <clears throat> wow. Mm. 
I think it's time for a, a fitting question mm. on this. Is, who, who's to, I hear a voice. Who's talking? Yeah. So what's the worst service you've ever gotten in a restaurant? Because well, right I'm not, now I'm thinking it's this restaurant and that sauce. Yeah. You're the worst. I wouldn't tip <laughs> you for anything. Let me just tell you. You are the worst service I... <coughs> holy smoke. Oh. Oh. Mm. What was the question again? I forgot. Something about service. Yeah, what's the worst what service? What time is you've our ever worship gotten? service? Yeah. What yeah. What's the worst <laughs> service you've ever gotten in a restaurant? Uh, I, I don't know if Susan would even remember this. Early in our marriage, we went to um, a chain restaurant of some sort. And I mean, we just said, we ordered, and an hour later, I asked the waiter, you know, where's our food? We've been waiting for an hour. I mean, we didn't have water, we didn't have anything. And I tend to be the kind to stop people and say, hey, we're over here. Susan asked me not to do that. We were newly married. I was trying to be good. And finally, after an hour, he said, oh, I forgot to put in your order. So I finally just, so he brought out food later on. And I said, you know, I think we've waited long enough. We ought to get some kind of a discount or something. And he said, you're out of your mind. I said, we're out of here. So I did pay for the meal, but I didn't give it. That's the only time ever in my life, honestly, I never gave anybody a tip. I'm going to give you a tip right now. If you ever make me do this again, <laughs> you are terminated on the spot. Uh, good, yeah, well, um, you know, if, if, I, if I could only take credit for this idea, it was not my <laughs> idea. But uh, it, Patrick, it has... I like you. That's the problem. I really like you. But there's a part of me right now that just wants to harm you, but you're yeah, too big, yeah, so it's well, not going to happen. I mean, uh, but there's a, man, holy smoke. This has definitely been an experience, that's for sure. But you know what? We made it to the other side. We did it, buddy. We got through all six of those sauces. Listen, this didn't, it didn't even phase me. I didn't even know there was any difference. They all tasted the same to me. I uh -huh. I don't know about you, but you... Sir, so you're, you're going to take seconds on that debate. Well, I know. I mean, we got to, you know, there are other people that need to enjoy this. I'm no, just yeah, saying, okay. this, this is a piece of cake. This never, I never even... I noticed no difference from the first one to the last okay. one. Okay, all right. Uh, it was all the same to me. I mean, I just enjoyed the wings. That's so all I'll, to I'll let the crew know then after they finish shooting the next episode of Hot Ones that uh, to send the bomb and the fiery fool will send it home with you. Well, that way you I mean, can enjoy you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very much the kind of guy that likes to share. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just feel like other people need to be able to enjoy, and okay. these are very enjoyable. They're very pleasant. They're easy on the palate. So we'll make sure that Booker brings them to your table for the next staff luncheon. Yeah, well, well, they're very decorative, too. We could just make a decoration out of them and just leave them on the table for people to look at and enjoy because they're very colorful. They this are, one they is are. starting to worry me because I think it's actually bubbling up. Uh, it's very possible. So, is, that, is that the bomb? That's um, the nuclear waste one? I don't know how to read anymore. Okay. I've, I've, right, used to, I've forgotten how to read. Yeah, I All just right. so. But I did not touch my milk. You did not, and you're a champion for that. Good job. This yeah. is the last wing, and here's my deal. I, somehow I got, did you get another one? I, I did have an extra wing, yes. Well, I'm going to eat mine with Just nothing a naked on one. It. Just right. a naked wing. All right, I'll enjoy the last mm, one. I'm so, good. last wing, thanks for joining in us. It's been thanks great fun, y'all. This is a piece of cake. Anybody can do it. <laughs> nothing to it. Have a good week. Holy smoke, man. That is awful. <laughs>